Welcome back to today's lecture on X-ray crystallography. In the previous class, we learnt about uh, the X-ray sources, different types of X-ray sources that are known and their power, how the X-rays are generated. And then we were learning about seven crystal systems and 14 Bravais lattices. So in that, we discussed about the fact that we have in monoclinic system C and I and I have written it as C or I and I indicated that these two are one and the same. So today we will see how these two are uh, same. See here in this particular figure is drawn a monoclinic unit cell with the axis as indicated here in the figure down that B axis is pointing towards us, C axis is pointing towards right and A is the axis pointing upwards. So in this orientation, if you consider the unit cell connecting these points which I am marking now, The unit cell which forms like that has one face a different one atom which is centered and that center atom is this one. So along with those eight corner atoms we have two atoms at the face which is perpendicular to C that means this is a C centered lattice. A different consideration of the same lattice which is drawn here in black if I try to redraw that on this side it encompasses a different orientation of the same lattice where the particular atom which was earlier red and the centered atom has become a body centered atom now. So this is basically the way we look at this unit cell either we look at the unit cell like this or we tilt the unit cell like that. The centering of the unit cell changes from C to I. Therefore, monoclinic C centered and monoclinic I centered lattice is one and the same with a change in lattice parameter. This particular picture is adapted from the textbook of Stout and Jensen. So, if you go uh, and read the textbook, you will find this figure and the explanation in that. <coughs> so, in association with this uh, understanding, I would like to keep give one question or a problem to all of you that in case of tetragonal lattice we have indicated that you have only tetragonal body centered lattice or tetragonal primitive lattice but we do not have face centered tetragonal as one of the Bravais lattice. We would like you to find out the reason behind that. So now let us uh, go in and understand the symmetry elements, point groups and space groups that are there in uh, three dimensional crystal structures. You must have learnt about the symmetry elements in case of molecular symmetry. So when we talk about a molecular symmetry, suppose I am trying to understand what symmetry is present in this water molecule we know that this molecule has a two-fold symmetry. This molecule has a plane of symmetry that is the plane of the molecule and then a mirror plane which is bisecting the molecule like this containing the two-fold axis. Remember both the mirror planes contain the two-fold axis and that is why we call them as sigma v's and the corresponding point group notation we write as C2v. Similarly, if we have a molecule 
like this. which is 1 to dichloroethene. In this particular case, the twofold axis that is there is perpendicular to the plane of projection. So that this chloro goes to that chloro and that chloro comes to this chloro, it is a twofold axis. And the plane of the molecule is the sigma plane and we write it as sigma h. So, this is molecule has point group C2H. Now, in both the cases, the symmetry elements that are there are within the molecule that we are talking about. So, the C2 axis or the sigma plane, it either bisects the molecule or it passes through the molecule. In case of crystallographic symmetry, the symmetry elements that we know do not go through the molecule, but rather it talks about the symmetry between one molecule and the other molecule which is there in space. Of course, in some cases the molecule which we are talking about may have a particular symmetry, say a twofold axis or a mirror plane and that twofold or a mirror plane may coincide with a crystallographic symmetry and we end up getting half molecule in the structure that is a special case. But in general when we are talking about symmetry in three dimensional lattice, we are talking about symmetry between two molecules that are arranged in space following a particular symmetry. So, when we try to compare the molecular symmetry with the crystallographic symmetry, we need to understand the comparison, how these symmetry elements compare, how these symmetry elements are related, how they are different. So, in case of molecular symmetry, the proper rotational axis of symmetry is identified by C n and the n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 and so on up to infinity. So, one can think of a molecule which is like hydrogen which has C infinity axis. But in case of crystallographic symmetry, this proper axis of rotation is designated as n and this n is nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6. We do not have 5 fold symmetry in extra crystallography. We do not have 5 fold symmetry in 3 dimensional space lattices. We will come to that in a, in a few minutes. In case of molecular symmetry as I already indicated and you are all aware. There are two types of sigma planes, sigma v and sigma h. Sigma v is the uh, mirror plane which contains the principal axis in it and sigma h is the mirror plane which is perpendicular to the uh, principal axis. In this particular case of crystallographic symmetry, we have two types of mirror planes, longitudinal mirror and transverse mirror. Then in both molecular symmetry and crystallographic symmetry, we have inversion symmetry that is point of inversion I. Then in case of molecular symmetry, we have improper axis of symmetry which is S2n where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 whatever. These are called the rotor reflection axis whereas in case of crystallographic symmetry, this improper axis of symmetry becomes n bar and there also this n is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 and we call it as roto inversion axis and that means it is rotation followed by inversion. So, the difference in improper axis of symmetry and in molecular symmetry and crystallographic symmetry is 
in molecular symmetry it is rotation followed by reflection and here in case of uh, n bar that is roto inversion it is rotation followed by inversion. In addition to these uh, symmetry elements which are common in both the systems like molecular and crystallography, we have two more symmetry elements that are coming in crystallographic symmetry. One is the screw axis and the other one are glide planes which are not present in molecular symmetry because of obvious reasons because these are not just the axis, these are rotational axis along with a translational component or a reflection with a translational component. So, this screw axis is denoted as Nx where n can be 2, 3, 4 and 6 and x varies from 1 to n minus 1 which means if it is n equal to 2 it can be only 2, 1. In case of 3 it can be 3, 1 and 3, 2. In case of 4 it can be 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3 and so on. So, for 6 it can be 6, 1, 6, 2 up to 6, 5. The glide planes are named as A, B, C, N and D glides. So, these glide planes are actually a reflection followed by half translation along the direction of A, B, C or N or diagonal. So, slowly we will get to know about these how the these symmetry elements can be understood in three dimensions. So, when we have so many new symmetry elements, when we have uh, crystallographic symmetries identified in terms of numbers, when we try to do a projection of these symmetry elements in two dimensional paper or any a board or somewhere, we need to identify these symmetry elements using different symbols. So, these symbols are important to identify these symmetry elements in case of in while reading a textbook or while reading the international table of crystallography. So, the symmetry element which is the first symmetry element that we know is a twofold axis of rotation is designated as this with a filled elliptical object. When we talk about threefold symmetry field triangle when we talk about a fourfold uh, principal axis of rotation this is obviously designated as a cube uh, as a square which is completely filled and a sixfold axis of rotation is designated as an as a hexagon as I am drawing here which is also completely filled. Then simultaneously when we say 2 bar this is designated just like 2 but with open circle in the middle and the outer part of the circle is filled. So, this is 2 bar, 3 bar is again a triangle like 3 then you leave one open circle in the center and fill the outer part of the triangle. Similarly, 4 bar and 6 bar also can be drawn with open circle in the middle and the outer part of that circle is closed. So, other than these as I indicated there are screw axis. So, a 2 1 screw which indicates it is a two fold rotation and half translation that is two fold rotation plus half translation 
that means translation along the axis but half the length of the unit cell is a 2 1 screw and as you can recognize two fold rotation means rotation by 180 degree 3 1 should look like first like three fold and to indicate the translation we extend the edges like that. So this means three fold rotation that means 120 degree rotation followed by one third translation. Similarly, <coughs> the 3, 2 will be another triangle as usual, but the extension will be in the other direction indicating that the operation is taking place in the opposite direction. So this means it is 240 degree rotation followed by two third translations. So what happens is in this case is the object from one point rotates by 120 but comes up upwards one third and then again rotates by 120 comes up by another one third. So from here to there directly is in opposite direction 120 degree rotation plus two third translation. But in the correct direction it is 240 degree rotation plus two third of translation. So in the same manner, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3 can be drawn like this. This is 4, 1, 4, 2 is interesting in one sense because 4 2 means 180 degree rotation followed by half translation which is similar to 2 1 if you look at that and 4 3 is opposite of 4 1 as I have drawn. So 4 1 the directions are on the left so it is towards the right and so on. So now the last one is 6 fold which is 6 1, 6 2, 6 3, 6 4 and 6 5, we draw it one by one, 6 1 we should have like this, 6 2 we should have like that, alternate edges are extended because this is 60 degree rotation plus 1 sixth translation. This one is 120 degree rotation plus 1 third translation, 2 sixth translation means 1 third translation, 6 3 means 180 degree rotation plus half translation that is 3 sixth translation so we should have only these two lines 
six four is opposite of six two. So in the same manner we draw this six, but then whatever was extended this way, I extend it in the other direction and make it as six two, which is to seventy degree rotation plus to third translation and six five is opposite of 6 1 which is like that which actually means that it is sorry this is 2 to 40 degree rotation and then this is 300 degree rotation plus 5 sixth translation. So, as a result, what is happening is by doing a rotation simultaneously moving upwards, by doing it 180 degree rotation, half translation, another 180 degree rotation, and half translation, we have translated the object from the lower unit cell to the upper unit cell. So, that is how. In case of 3, 1, we start from the from one point, rotate it by 120 degree, but lift it by one third, rotate it by another 120 degree and lift it by another one third, rotate it by another 120 degree and lift it by one third. It comes exactly above this particular point, but it comes in the next unit cell. So, by doing this one third, one third up, we reach the next unit cell and that is what is the most important uh, impo symmetry element in crystal structure where a three dimensional periodicity that is the distance between the point in one particular direction remains the same is maintained. In addition to these symmetry elements which we have drawn here. We have other symmetry elements which we need to also know the uh, symbols of. In we know that we have mirror symmetry. This mirror plane is designated as a bold line. When you talk about A or a B glide plane, what is a glide plane? Glide plane is a mirror followed by translation. So, this glide plane is designated in projection as dashed lines. The C glide is designated as a set of dots array of dots. The n glide is designated as dot dash dot dash dot dash kind of notation, while the diamond glide or d glide is designated as arrow dot arrow dot arrow dot and so on. So, these symbols can be looked at in the page number of 59 of Stout and Jensen's textbook. So, what happens when we have these uh, symmetry elements, we try to identify what happens when these symmetry elements operate to a particular point. So, to understand what happens to these points in three dimension, we should first know what happens to a point in two dimension. So, let us assume that we have a two dimensional coordinate system where I have x and y and in that I have a point located somewhere here which is x y. 
Now if I rotate this point by 180 degree, it comes here and becomes minus x minus y. If we rotate the point by 90 degree only, what has happens to that? This intercept which was x and that intercept which was y is now changed and this intercept here becomes minus y and this intercept becomes x. So, the point becomes y minus y and x. So, in this way we can change the coordinates when we apply a symmetry. Suppose now if I have this same coordinate system x and y and we have a point in this which is here x and y and I am saying that I have a mirror along y perpendicular to x. Where would that point come? That point would come somewhere here and the corresponding x intercept will be minus x and y intercept will still remain y. So, by doing a mirror x y, I am doing a mirror perpendicular to x, I am getting minus x y as the points. Similarly, here when we had x y, by doing a twofold, we have got minus x minus y. So, now in crystallography what we do is whenever we have something minus, we write it as a bar. So, minus x will be written as x bar, minus y will be written as y bar and so on. So, in this half an hour uh, lecture we have identified what are the different symmetry elements that we can consider in three dimensional lattice, how they are similar and how they are different from the molecular symmetry point of view and we get to know we have learnt about two more new symmetry elements namely the screw axis and glide plane and we know how to designate these different axes like 2 fold, 3 fold, 4 fold, 6 fold and so on and the corresponding screw axis how what are their notations. So, in the following lecture we will learn how to do this uh, transformation of coordinates in terms of x, y, z three dimensional coordinates. So, we will see how the equivalent points are generated when a particular symmetry is applied.